Well, hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX Vaku. My name is Megha Sharma, and joining me on the broadcast is a very special guest, Vivek Lal. He's the chief executive of General Atomics Global Corporation, which is a leading aerospace, defense, and tech company based out of United States. Vivek has been in the United States for a very long time, making India proud and Indians proud. Uh, uh, across the entire world, because uh, not only has he been in the defense sector and currently heading General Atomics Global Corporation, he's also been part of the Lockheed Martin Corporation, Boeing, back in India, he, uh, you were also dealing with Reliance. Uh, you know, it, it, it's exciting uh, sphere of things that you have found yourself in, you've built a career your, your, for yourself, uh, and it's a dynamic, uh, strategic arena to be in. If you could share some more light into what all it entails, how, how difficult and challenging can things be? And uh, at the same time, uh, how much you enjoy the entire process of being in this se sector? Thank you, Mega. It's a pleasure and honor to be with you and, and our viewers. Um, yes, so I've had a passion for airplanes from a very young age, and uh, therefore aerospace and, and defense has been close to my heart all my life, having lived in different parts of the world, growing up, um, whether it's Europe or the US or, or, or Africa or Asia, um, I've had the rare opportunity to, to see what are some of the motivators and challenges in different parts of the world when it comes to technology and research and development and so forth. And I find that in the sector that I'm in, which is heavily dependent on R&D and innovation. Um, there are some common aspirations and passions of people around the world uh, to help contribute and further the science. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that regard, it's, it's very humbling that I was part of this journey um, that saw a lot of growth uh, over the last 30 years. And uh, I think some of the challenge, of course, remains that as we um, expand into this area when one needs greater and greater innovation and collaboration, not just collaboration within the country, but collaboration across the world. Absolutely. And uh, very recently you were in India and uh, it's an uh, annual sojourn that you make because of the kind of ties India and United States shares when it comes to the defense and strategic sector as well. Uh, has there been a dramatic transformational change that you've witnessed? in terms of uh, what India was as a defense power maybe 10 years ago, a decade ago, or two decades ago, and what is uh, what it is as it has gone ahead and positioned itself now? Absolutely, Mega. I think the uh, U.S.-India defense relationship has emerged uh, very significantly in the last decade or two. And I think uh, compared to where things are, to where things uh, were, um, I think one of the biggest shifts has been the confluence of the congruence of two um, nations with common objectives, common goals, um, and and you know shared democratic principles and values. Um, and and so in that regard, whether it's the military to military ties or the defense trade, or the uh, willingness to look at co-development and co-production. Um, all those areas have seen a remarkable increase um, over the last many years and, and it's very encouraging and I think it's just the beginning of a very strong relationship um, in many of these areas. Uh, talk to us about your personal journey. Uh, you've been raised in Indonesia, you were in Asia, you yourself said that you've traveled various parts of the world including uh, living in Europe, at this point of time you're in the United States. Uh, has there been a perceptional shift in the way the Indian community is looked upon by all these foreign uh, nationals, uh, for that matter, natives of those particular regions that you've lived in? Um, what more can be done at this point of time to bring about that sort of uh, an image change that perhaps India has already gone ahead and brought about uh, in, 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 in ways and means that are now very, very visible in terms of uh, how the world perceives India as this time? Absolutely, Mega. I think there has been a very significant change as I reflect back over the 30 years and different geographic locations that you mentioned. Uh, the respect for India, the respect for Indians, and what the contributions of the Indian diaspora have been around the world 
uh, and the strong people to people ties with India and the various nations, they've just gone through a dramatic positive shift. And uh, I think as a result, if you look at any of the economies, um, in, including the US, a lot of the uh, engine for in many sectors is driven by um, Indian Americans, uh, as an example. And so uh, you look at the levels that people have reached in the different corporate arenas, or as well as the governments itself, um, one will find great um, improvement and great respect for what India and Indians have done around the world. And uh you know, people like you who have made quite the change, uh, you are the influencers when it comes to the Indian diaspora, you are the voice of the Indian community. Uh, and, and, and when you talk about the defense and strategic sector, your name crops up every single time. Uh, and you being such a significant voice, is there a way to amplify the story of the enterprising Indians uh, and the culture and the ethos of India to the world? If, if, if there could be a platform that could be created or is it already being done by the likes of you? Um, I think there are uh, six buckets of stakeholders that continually affect change, affect policies, affect progress. And I think um, as uh, Indian Americans and as uh, being part of the Indian diaspora, these these uh, stakeholders are, are important to keep in mind as, as we move forward. Um, to, to name a few, one is the industry captains. The industry captains on both sides, whether US and India, have a significant role in, in furthering um, ties. Uh, the other set of stakeholders would be the, the bureaucracy on both sides and, and understanding the two different systems and how to continue to find convergence um, so that there's value created for both systems. Then, of course, is the political spectrum um, on both sides and, you know, share democratic values and principles and, and continuing to make sure that that uh, converges in the future. Uh, I think media and, and, and the great work that you're doing in, in terms of enhancing the uh, visibility and the um, common commonality between the two nations and, and trying to make progress that has a very significant uh, role um, at large. Um, and then, I, of course, I do feel that uh, no matter which field, whether it is IT or defense or finance uh, or healthcare, um, I think um, the Indian diaspora has come to the forefront. And, and so anything that can be done to encourage and to highlight the good work that's been uh, going on um, will certainly help in this process. And while there may have been several of these fora, these clubs, uh, these platforms that may have been created to build about the community and the stronghold that it has at this point of time in various continents, uh, America, especially when you talk about because you've been living there forever. Uh, and, 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 and at this point of time, there are only just a handful of individuals, you know, you will talk about a Sundar Pichai or you talk about a Sunil Mittal that people have heard of and, and, and they are recognized. And, and, and beyond a point, you just, you know, uh, you don't have a choice or, or you don't, you are just trying to struggle to figure out names of the Indian Americans or the Indian Europeans or the or those who are living in Africa or Asia or Australia who've done fantastic work. So, so could there be, is there already something that is being built at this point to recognize these people who are doing fantastic work, but at the same time are uh, not as recognized as their counterparts in say a Pichai or a Mittal. Uh, and, and if there could be a push that could be taken in that direction to, to uh, uh, bring about this entire experience uh, to amplify their voices, to celebrate and recognize their feats and bring them on a global arena. Absolutely. I think it's very important to uh, get those unsung heroes identified and, and showcase, if you will, um, that have not only uh, better the economy of whichever country they're living in or better the um, living conditions for people in the community, but also, um, you know, on a bilateral basis or, or a multilateral basis. And so to give those folks uh, a voice uh, and, and be an inspiration for the next generations to come 
to see all the work that has been done. I think there there is a certain vacuum, if you will, and and I do feel that that needs to be filled. I think there are various uh, chambers of commerce and associations that try and highlight that in the different countries. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, I think the road is long uh, ahead, and and there's a lot that can be done in that. Uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Vivek, for joining me on this very special broadcast. We'll continue to have you on our special shows in the future as well. Well, for that moment, uh, this is Mega signing off from Waku NewsX. Waku, continue to watch this show. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.